So to start with, can you please tell me your name and your date of birth and where you were born? Uh, my name is Fuad Salem. I was born in a city called Shamia near the Diwania in 1934. And uh, well, uh, I had a rough childhood, were all the time persecuted. And one of the incidents I remember when I was a child, one of the laborers or the workers uh, shot my mother ankle uh, with a gun. And uh, I remember when we went to the guy, we told him, why did you do that? He started crying. He said, they told me the Jew, the Jew, kill him. Now I, I killed him. Now who's going to support me? Who's going to feed me? Who's going to take care of me? Uh, unfortunately, it was too late. And uh, another incident, I remember I was in school. And one day the teacher gave us uh, homework. So every one of us, we were about 30 students, did the homework. So. Uh, the next day, the teacher came after checking the homework. He was insulting the class, uh, telling them, you're nonsense, you're stupid. Uh, among all of you, only one did the homework rightly. And all of you screwed up, you didn't do it. And he told them the only one who did it right was Fuad Salem. So I was shocked, I didn't know. I mean, I just did my homework, I didn't have any intention. So after we left the class, all the kids came, started beating me. Oh, because of you, uh, the teacher was insulting us and I was begging them, look, I didn't do anything. I didn't know, believe me, I did not do my homework intentionally. I just did it. No, it's all because of you that started beating me. I had to run away. Well, uh, just because I was a Jew and, you know, I was smarter than all of them, they did that. So um, another uh, incident that I remember when uh, I was in Baghdad going to, to school, to Shamash, uh, one night uh, the police came in, that, uh, in the area which we call the Seneg, and uh, they came, I was living in my aunt's house, and they came uh, to my aunt's house, uh, house and they took my uncle, uh, my, uh, the husband of my aunt, and then they took me with them. I was maybe 13 years old. And they took us to, you know, the prison, which was right on the river. And they, you know, chained us and uh, we didn't know what happened, accusing us communists, Sionists. Mm -hmm. But what we saw there, uh, we saw how they were torturing, uh, you know, the Jews there. There was one of them, uh, Sasson Dilal, his name, which they hanged him later on. He was hung there and uh, they were beating him all night. Well, luckily they didn't do anything to us, just questioning and uh, keeping us in the cold, you know, in the middle of winter. So after one week, uh, they took us to the judge, and uh, I don't know, from God, I, I saw the judge, I remembered him. So when the judge was asking everybody, who are you, what are you doing, why did you do this, why did you do that? So when he came to me, I told him, look, your honor, I am uh, the nephew of uh, Yusuf Khalasji, whom you know. Uh, we were your neighbors, we are people who love our country, we don't do anything bad. Or, so he told me, who is Yusuf? I told him he's my uncle and he used to come to our house, we used to come to you. So later on the judges uh, got angry with the people who brought us and told them, okay, take these people out, send them out. These people, you know, you brought them by mistake. So they released me, my uncle, and uh, uh, the husband of my uh, aunt. So, and since that uh, time, you know, we always had pressure, persecution, you know. And uh, finally, at the age of 14 or something, uh, my father decided to send me to Iran. 
So we came, uh, they dropped us in the border, and we had to come walking uh, from Iraqi border until Iran. And uh, one thing I remember, uh, I had 10 uh, pounds sterling when I came uh, to Iran. But uh, I, I kept it with me, I hidden it, uh, you know, in my clothes. But when we slept uh, in, in Iran in a, uh, in a hotel, at night I, uh, we slept, we got up in the morning, the money gone. And I didn't know what happened that the last money. So I got up in the morning, I don't have anything. Yeah, so we came to Tehran and we settled down. And uh, well, I luckily I found Evelyn, we got married and life went on until Khomeini came again. We had to run away from Khomeini because I was uh, working with Israel and bringing uh, food and many things from Israel and I was scared to stay uh, more. They told me you have to leave, so we left Iran and we came to the United States. And uh, now over 30 years we are here. I mean, thank God uh, our, we could give our kids the best education, settle down and try to live a quiet and uh, simple life. So can you tell me about your parents? What were their occupations? Mm -hmm. they yeah, doing? my father was uh, like landlord. He worked in ag agriculture and fabric. And uh, uh, I remember the gold he used to have, you know, boxes full of gold. I remember he used to bury it in the middle of the house, you know. And uh, when I asked him, he said he left the gold still there. You know, gold and silver, boxes buried under. And uh, uh, he was, uh, you know, a very kind person. He helped a lot of people. But again, he was put in prison. They uh, accused him of smuggling uh, money to Israel, you know. And uh, he spent about six months in a prison. And finally, you know, when... Uh, uh, the migration happened and uh, they had to leave everything behind and go to Israel. Your mother? Mm, my mom, yeah, she was raising the kids. Children didn't work. She was just uh, busy raising the kids and whatever my dad would say, she would follow up. Yeah. Do you remember your grandparents at all? Mm, yeah, I remember my grandparents, yeah. Uh, well... <laughs> Yeah, I, I still, my grandmother lived maybe uh, over 100 years. You know, she stayed in Iraq with my uncle, and then she went to Turkey and went to Israel. And I had the, the luck to see her. She was almost 100 years old in Israel. I went to visit her. And uh, her husband passed away in, uh, in Iraq, but she stayed and she came to Israel. Can you tell me about your brothers and sisters? Yeah. Uh, my brother, they went to Israel, and they lived in uh, uh, Mabara for some time. But later on, they they moved around, and uh, one of my brother went to the kibbutz. The other one uh, also tried to work, and he was a teacher. Then uh, the one who was in the kibbutz, uh, he joined uh, Soleil Bonnier and he went to Nigeria to work and building, uh, you know, dams and bridges. Yeah, the other brother, he, he was young, he, he was uh, uh, fixing locks and, uh, you know, doing all that work. Yeah, my sister, three sisters, they all got married and, uh, in Israel and they are still there. Yeah, the be the middle one. She was a nurse in Tel Shomer. She was in the army also. The uh, also the young one was also in the army. And uh, they are still alive and they are there. So, what's the meaning behind your name? Yeah, mm, actually, my name was Hai because uh, Hai that alive. When I was a child, uh, I was almost uh, sick. 
and we, we took typhoid, three kids, and they all of them died. And me, they gave up. They said also he's gonna die, but by miracle, you know, uh, somebody came and they burned me on my head. I still have those signs. She told them, look, uh, he's gone, he's uh, gonna die. So I'll tell you just to use the old <laughs> medicine of burning. So, and uh, I lived. So they called me high, that mean, uh, you know, I was saved from death, you know. And, uh, but I could not use the name, you know, every time I use that name, the kid will hit me, will beat me, you know, so I had to change my name to Fuad and then use the name Salem. So when I went uh, to high school in, in Baghdad, uh, there were few uh, Jewish kids in the school and they used to beat them. But me, nobody knew I was a Jew. So when one day they discovered I was a Jew, everybody was shocked. They did not have the slightest idea I was a Jew. And they wanted to beat me, but uh, they stopped. <laughs> anyway. So what was um, life like in the town that you can't come from? Uh, you know, my uncle and my father was like the, uh, you know, the mayor of that town. They used to manage the whole town, uh, finance the people, you know, give them money um, and take and return uh, agriculture products. And they were very popular until, you know, all of a sudden anti-Semitism started you know, after the World War, and there were some Nazis who came to Iraq, and they were instigating people against the Jews, Jews and Jews and Jews, you know. And uh, uh, life from that time was like hell, you know, for everybody. I mean, we were afraid to walk. I, I remember if I walk in the street and Muslim would see me, they would come and, and beat me. And then I used to go and cry and, you know, one day <laughs> I cursed them in such a way that uh, they wanted to kill me. I cursed, uh, they beat me in such a way that I started cursing the religion of Islam, the prophet, you know. But luckily some people intervened, otherwise they would have killed me because, you know, cursing the Islam is, uh, you know, <laughs> the punishment is uh, dead. You know, but I passed it. <laughs> were there other Jewish families in your town? Yeah, there were about 40, 50 Jewish family. And we already knew, you know, we have to bribe people, we have to be kind to them to survive. Was the Jewish community close to each other? Was there a synagogue and something? Yeah, we had a big synagogue, we had, uh, you know, um, people, uh, I mean, the Muslim at the beginning they were nice to us. They used to come even sleep in our house. We used to invite them, you know, eat with us. But we don't know what happened later on. I mean, before that time also, we didn't have really so much time. I remember my grandfather, they lived in peace. And we don't know what happened, you know. I think this is the, from the time where, you know, Hitler and the, the Nazis came, started that anti-Semitism in Iraq. So what was your school like? School, uh, beginning of school, it was public school, and uh, we used to go and uh, regularly were, uh, you know, also persecuted. We had to keep low, low profile. We don't want even to, you know, show ourselves, we are capable, we are intelligent, we are smart, we are better than them. Because most of them were so primitive, you know. And uh, even I remember in the classes, they were, most of them, they would uh, fail, you know. And uh, you see the Jewish students are always on top. What languages did you speak? Mm, Arabic, you know. So you told me a story about um, being chosen to go to a special school in yeah. Baghdad. Can you tell the story again? Yeah. What uh, happened, uh, Iraq was formed of 14 districts. They call it Liwa. 
and uh, every year the government would take the best three students in that district and they take us to the college they provide us with all uh, expenses best teacher from abroad and boarding everything uh, yeah, the highest level so I was one of the super student there so I don't know if they knew I was a Jew but they asked my dad that you should send him to Baghdad to go to our college. My dad also was worried how he's gonna leave me alone, where he's gonna send me. Then the people told him, you're lucky. You know you know what college is this, what high school? You know, and they will provide him with everything. The only thing I remember, I couldn't eat their food because I was a religion and my father was religious. So, uh, my father came and uh, sat with me in that, uh, you know, college and uh, started, even though I was religious, he told me, listen, in our religion, when you are forced, you have to, you have to eat their food. There is no other chance. So he sat with me, he persuaded me, I started eating some of their food. Otherwise, how could I survive without eating? <laughs> yeah, and finally it became normal for me. So, how is Shabbat observed in the Shabbat, or were scared in the school, and think, you know, we wouldn't uh, pretend that uh, we are Jews. I mean, we were hiding, so we couldn't do the Shabbat. But I had family there close by. I used to go to them once in a while on the Shabbat. Yeah, and then we can celebrate, we make Kiddush, yeah. What kinds of foods did your mom cook for you? Mm, all the typical Iraqi food, you know, I remember the okra, <laughs> the tweet, and all kinds of food. We're still uh, trying to do it now, you know. Did uh, you, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's okay, yeah. Did you have a bar mitzvah? Mm, I had very simple bar mitzvah, you know. You know, we couldn't celebrate or make uh, parties or something, you know. So it's very simple. They came and made me wear the tefillim and succeed. The rabbi came and uh, the hazan came and uh, that's what we did. Do you have any positive memories of your relationship to non-Jews, to Muslims or any other Arabs? Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember uh, my uncle had some Muslim friends and they were, they were so nice. I mean, they would even speak like us, like the Jews, the dialogue uh, Arabic of the Jews. And I was shocked to see them, they speak like Jews. And uh, they were very friendly. But up to the end, they were friendly, but there are only few, you know. Do you remember the Farhud? Yeah, I remember the Farhud. They took, uh, in our town, they took all the men, they imprisoned them in that city and uh, they put them in prison in one of the Jewish houses uh, and uh, all we could do to pray and to pray and to pray uh, were afraid they will you know kill us they will do something but thank God uh, after maybe a month they release all I was a child of course I used to go take food bring food to my father to my uncle uh, and then uh, they released us, uh, but uh, they took uh, my father and the other, uh, you know, uh, to court. Uh, they accused him of smuggling money or being uh, you know, a Jew. And thank God when they took him to court, finally, you know, the judge released him and everything went peacefully. And your uncle? Uh, uh, the same thing, yeah, my dad, my uncle, the same thing, they took them all, but they released them at the end. So when your mom was shot in the ankle, was there any kind of justice at all? No, no. I mean, I, I remember one thing, the police guy came to investigate, and he saw the blood on the ground, and instead of, you know, looking at it, he was trying to put sand on it dirt on it to cover it and then my aunt uh, you know she told him why you're doing that why you're covering the blood check the blood look this man killed him 
and he didn't do anything, you know. And the guy was uh, there, alive, but he was sorry he killed my uncle because he lost. Uh, nobody would support him, nobody would give him. He had everything my wanted, my uncle gave him. Unfortunately, you know, uh, I still remember he was crying, he was sorry, but it's too late. What can he do? So how did that, how, how did that affect your family? Didn't they want to leave right mm. after? Well, uh, leave where to go? Israel wasn't there, you know. We had no other choice, you know. We didn't have any choice to go where, you know. So only after Israel we were thinking of leaving Iraq. Who took care of all of your cousins? Mm. My cousins we were rich. I mean, all my uncles were rich. They were landlord and, you know, and up to now, some of the thing, uh, you know, uh, they call it uh, water uh, uh, provider for the agriculture. Uh, still no one in the name of the Khalasji, you know, machines, you know, up to now, still bear the name of Khalasji. They call it, I don't know, Nawair, that means those that uh, give water to the, uh, to the farmer, to the agriculture. So when you were growing up, were you involved with any Jewish organizations or Zionist clubs? Mm, no. How did oh. your family feel about Zionism then? Of course, inside, uh, we loved it, and we know we are Jews, and, uh, you know, and Zionists, the same thing, you know. We don't put a difference. But uh, the Iraqi government used to use the excuse. Any Jew that they don't like, they say, you are Zionist, Zionist. You know, and I, up to now, I don't know, there is no difference between Judah and uh, the Yonist, you know, they are all the same. Did you have a social life? Did you have Jewish friends? Uh, yeah, we did. We have a uh, 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 Jewish friend and we have good life and we had parties every night, you know. Uh, we used to, you know, enjoy ourselves. Uh, and uh, we had a musician, we had singers, you know. So you mentioned how you were imprisoned in Baghdad. Yeah. Can you talk about that? How did, did they come to your house and arrest you? How yeah. did they let you go? Yeah, they just took us, me, my uncle, and uh, uh, the husband of uh, my aunt, and they took us to uh, there was the prison, which was right on the river, and took us on top in the middle of winter, and we, we all had a pyjama, uh, no clothes, no shoes, no nothing. And they kept us all night there. The police were guarding us. They had a blanket, they had fire to warm themselves. And we were shivering until morning and witnessing how they were beating, you know, there was a, a lady there also and her husband. Also, they were beating them all the time, you know asking them, you know, whom do you know, who is this, who is that. But uh, as they did not beat, as I said, there was the guy who hung later on, Sasson Dilal. He was with us uh, most of the time. And the way they were beating him, I mean, it's unbelievable. I still remember, actually, we met the brother here one day. To the, he came to the synagogue, and they were telling him that I was in prison with your brother. Mm. And uh, finally, uh, you know, they hanged him, and unfortunately, uh, that's the story. Uh, and they hanged later on many other Jews. So, how did your, tell me about your this family's decision for you to leave? Well, uh, my father was rich, so, he asked how can we at least send some of the money. So they decided to send me to Iran so that they can send money from Iraq and I keep some money, some of our property. So they did, I went to Iran, they did send me some money and actually, unfortunately this money also we gave it to one of our family and that guy also lost the money. 
So even that money we lost, <laughs> that we tried to smuggle from Iraq. But uh, thank God, I worked, I tried, I was alone, you know. I started working, teaching, and uh, I built my life, and I built again a fortune, and built uh, everything in Iran, and unfortunately we had to leave it again for a second time. We still have it uh, in, uh, in Iran now. A lot of property, land, you know. Uh, but uh, because I was working with Israel, they they blacklist me, so I cannot recover my property in Iran. So how did you leave Iraq? Were you smuggled? Yeah, they took us to the border. They were Kurds who usually help. So some Kurds came, and they took us um, uh, to the border and they handed us over to the other group of Kurds who, you know, all night we used to walk and at day we used to hide. Uh, there were farms where there are animals, the cows, so we used to hide with the cows and the animals so that nobody would see us. And at night we walk. We almost walked three nights until we reached the borders of uh, Iran. And that uh, city on the border was Qasr Shirin's name, where there were Jewish people uh, from Iran who came and tried to help us. How did your fam the rest of your family get out? Um, you know, they registered to go to Israel, and we know after uh, a day or two, the government said all those who registered to go, they should uh, leave everything they have. They should go as they are, no property, no nothing, no money. And they had to leave, you know, and they left and lived in Israel, in, of course, in the Mabara and the tent, you know. It was very tough life for several years until they, they built up their life from the beginning and, uh, and they did okay. That's the story of uh, many Iraqis, you know. They left everything behind and uh, they went to Israel to live, you know, like poor. So what did your fam what assets did your father leave? Uh, I remember the boxes of gold and silver. I still remember, I see them in front of me that they buried inside. Houses, land, money, you know, mm, a lot, a lot of money. If you had to estimate the value of what was yeah. left, what would, in dollars? Yeah. In dollar, I would think maybe about all of them, maybe half a million dollars. Because I remember those boxes, big cases, of gold and silver. And uh, also the community assets too, like synagogue and school and all that. Yeah. So when you arrived in um, Tehran, was it an easy settle? How did it go in the beginning? Mm, well, we had a family there, so yeah, I went and they helped me, uh, those family, but uh, unfortunately later on uh, I gave them <laughs> the money and uh, the money was lost. They invested in certain things. I Maybe we got about uh, 100,000 pounds from Iran, Iraq, uh, we smuggled to Iran. But uh, even that, we lost most of them. Mm -hmm. Maybe part of it remained. So when did you come to the United States? Mm, 1979. And how was it leaving? <laughs> did you flee? Did you have to leave everything? <laughs> yeah, I know. Again, we had to start all over again. You know, we came with little money, uh, and I had, I had to work hard, and uh, my wife helped me, and thank God, you know, we built up again uh, uh, life, uh, business, and uh, we're, thank God. So, um, so when you, where do you feel your home is? Still the memory of childhood in Iraq, you know, 
I remember everything about Iraq, where I live, you know. Uh, but right now, my kids, my family are here, so United States is the home to us. And um, what about the have you passed down to your sons from your Iraqi heritage? <laughs> oh, I try to tell them some of stories, but I hope one day they will see uh, what I said today because it's hard for them, you know, to digest, to accept it, you know, you know. I was in prison and, you know, I we were tortured, they know they can uh, un understand, but it's very hard for them, you know, because they were born here, they lived here. It's difficult for them to really, you know, visualize or understand exactly what we have gone through and what we suffered and how, you know, we were tortured. You know. So you were physically tortured in prison? Mm, yeah, we were beaten all the time, you know. They would slap us, you know, and they would come and they slap us on the neck here, you know, uh, with all their uh, power of energy. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to remember those. <laughs> so do you have a message for anyone who might see this? Is there something you want to say? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's the history, I would say, of most of the Jews, but we always find a way to survive. We survived. You know, and uh, we will survive because God gave us that uh, special gift, special energy, and uh, all I say that we have to be co kind, uh, show compassion to each other, and, uh, you know, be together. Uh, that's very important thing for uh, Jewish survival. You know, we should leave our differences aside. We should uh, have, you know, compassion and love together. And that's the only way they can nourish, you know, the Jewish, uh, you know, history and the Jewish survival. And they hope uh, everybody will go, you know, through this experience and, uh, you know, survive it. And we emerge strong. Are there any questions that you guys, any gaps, yeah. anything else? No, I want to thank you for would you, taking would you your like time. To go back to visit Baghdad, uh, Iraq? Uh, yeah, I'd love to, you know. Why? You know, just like to the memory to see, you know, um, how was it, you know, because everything we remember is clearly there, I remember, you know. It's good to see. How is it? What is it? You know, it's always like to, you know, visit your childhood places. You, you remember with the, the bad part or ugly part with the prison, what they did. Yeah. Do you have any happy memories from hey. that dad that you can you share know, it? Yeah, I mean, my family were happy family. I remember we always have parties, uh, singing, joyful occasions, you know. And there were times where we really were very happy. I remember, you know, uh, going to movies, to nightclubs, you know, even with children. So life was beautiful there, except, you know, the persecution that uh, they were, uh, you know, using and applying on the Jews. Otherwise, uh, life was wonderful. It's a lovely country, it's a rich country, the beautiful, but unfortunately, it had the wrong people. Do you remember mm -hmm. going and visiting the tombs of the prophets? Like yeah, the, uh, they call it Liyahun Nabi in the Chifel. Actually, my uh, aunt used to live there. We used to go there to her house. She was in the same place, yeah. And uh, every time we used to go there for, uh, you know, Eidiz uh, Yaga, that was the most beautiful occasion, fun, dancing and singing all the time. For a few days, a week, all night, like, uh, you know, parties and parties and parties, you know. Yeah. So that I remember, it's really, you know, that was close to where we lived also. Uh, yeah, we, that's what they call it the Chifel now and the uh, Leon Navi. Yeah.
remember the festivals, what festivals were your favorites that you celebrated with the family? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, um, uh, Purim, uh, Pesach, Rosh Hashanah, uh, Sukkot, you know. Uh, every feast for really great joy and great uh, party and great uh, celebration, you know. And uh, uh, I don't remember anything, uh, you know, that sad on those, uh, you know, occasions. Especially the Pesach, the Sukkot, you know. And uh, I remember all the singing, uh, sweets, the food, you know, special occasion we used to make for every feast. Yeah. So, what are you very proud of, of being an Iraqi Jew? Mm. Well, that's our history, that's uh, reality, that's our origin, and, uh, uh, you know, we are maybe, you know, chain of the Jews who came from uh, Palestine, from Israel to through Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, as far as I know, we lived there thousands of years. And uh, uh, I mean, the Jews had uh, such a great position. They were building the country. They helped the country, you know. And uh, we know that at the time of the Khalif and uh, 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 Harun al-Rashid, uh, I mean, many Jews were even like, uh, you know, ministers helping the country. Did you have so. any feelings about your migration and the fact that you left? Mm, I mean, no. Mm, I'm happy we left, uh, you know, really, I mean, you can't continue living under persecution, there is a limit, you know. So we are happy we lived, and we are happy now we are in America, and uh, that's what it is. Did you consider yourself a refugee or a migrant? Mm. Well, I think refugee, <laughs> you know, because both from Iraq we had to run away, from Iran also we had uh, unwillingly had to leave the country, you know. Because, uh, again, you know, there was some persecution in Iran, too. So we had to leave, leave everything behind us. How have you preserved your Sephardic or Mizrahi heritage? Mm, I mean, it's in our blood. We cannot uh, deny it. We cannot uh, run away from it. That's the origin. That's all our blood. And still remember, you know, in our childhood, how we were to go to the synagogue, celebrate all feasts, and, you know, enjoy every moment. Did you ever have a desire to live in Israel instead of in Yeah, of course. Uh, actually, I was planning to come to Iran, and then after Iran, go to Israel. But it so happened, uh, I don't know, I stayed in uh, Iran, and... Uh, I married uh, my wife, and I didn't have the chance to go to Israel, even though my family is there, but I always visited Israel. Yeah. And still, you know, it's our uh, homeland. And and that's reality. What about life in the United States? Was it easy to, m to move here, was it? Mm, yeah, it was hard at the beginning, but uh, luckily we could adjust to it and uh, find work, work and build up uh, life uh, from the beginning. And thank God we gave our kids the best education and we tried to do anything we could. You know, we were deprived from uh, education actually in Iraq, I mean, I know many schools were not. My uncle wanted to go to high school. I told him, because you are a Jew, you are not allowed. And, uh, but at least here we could give our kid the best education we could. Did yeah. you ever experience discrimination here? Mm, I wouldn't think uh, so, no. But uh, unfortunately, always uh, Jew is a Jew. You know, there is always something. You know. Is there anything? You know him better than anyone, mm -hmm. anything? Yeah. I remember one time he went to Texas and there was a steakhouse. 
and they said no Jews and no black people. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was some restaurant. And, uh, yeah, but uh, we didn't take it seriously. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, that was uh, 30 years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. and I remember also being in Atlanta mm -hmm. with my sister, and she told us, don't speak in Arabic or Farsi. You need yeah. to blend in with the people. Mm -hmm. So do you speak Farsi? Yeah, I learned Farsi in Iran. Do you speak Hebrew at all? Yeah, I, because my family, you know, when I first met them, they forgot Arabic. They only speak Hebrew, and I didn't know how to communicate with them. I cannot communicate with my brother, with my sister. I speak uh, Hebrew, I speak Arabic, and uh, uh, we had a very strange feeling, you know. How can I talk to my uh, sister, to my brother? But finally, we could adjust little by little. And uh, I learned Hebrew because um, all my family speak Hebrew. Anything else? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> this is I documented, appreciate. so if there's anything else you want to say, you'll have it to give to your uh, Only I hope one day we can recover part of our property in Iraq and in Iran, you know, that uh, we worked so hard to build and we lost it, but, uh, well, we leave it to destiny. Yeah. Mm. Or to the Israeli government, maybe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's one thing possible. Anyway, uh, really I want to thank you, your inspiration. I, uh, I was, uh, you know, he really hesitant to open up to talk uh, because these are uh, painful memories, but because of you, your attitude and your kindness and, you know, how gentle and kind you are, you, you really you inspired me. And I really want to thank you for that, you know. Actually, yeah. is, this is something I forgot to ask everybody today, but what, this is a plug for Jemena where I work. Yeah. What, why are organizations like Jemena important? Organizations that are preserving Mizrahi history, why do you think that they're important? Mm. It is, it's the history. Uh, we need it. it. It's part of our life and our blood, and we cannot deny it. So we have to do everything to preserve that, you know. Otherwise, uh, you know, where is our soul, where is our spirit? Yeah. I think that organizations like Jemena are very vital because first of all, we need to preserve this history that we think through every day.